Hello, today we are going to learn about uh, prenatal diagnosis. Uh, it is, uh, uh, in an exam point of view, you may get a couple, uh, one or two short notes from uh, this topic. Okay, So, I'll uh, try to make this video as short as possible. Uh, so, this is uh, one of the initial timelines that I have uh, mentioned, a okay, timeline. Okay, I have take, took this uh, in my first class. So, if you remember, uh, in this timeline, we had a name called prenatal period. That means this is called birth. Uh, this time point is birth. So, before that, it is prenatal period and after this is postnatal period. So, I told you the concept that our life doesn't actually begin here. Our life begins at the time of fertilization, if you, if you think like that. So, uh, you can imagine that this time period, when we call it as an embryo or a fetus, that time period is also, you have to think that that is a person, that is a patient. Okay, so in that idea, you are actually diagnosing conditions of this patient in this prenatal period. Okay, that is the importance of the word prenatal diagnosis. It means you are actually diagnosing conditions uh, of of the uh, of the fetus of the fetus or the embryo in uh, time periods before birth. Okay, that that is the idea of what uh, the meaning of prenatal diagnosis. So here, what I want to you to understand here is uh, the uh, the maternal uh, or the obstetric terminology okay I, I told you that this is the last menstrual period you remember that this time point will be last menstrual period which will be around two weeks uh, before the day zero so uh, from that point till 14 weeks okay 14 weeks we call this as the first trimester I, I mentioned this in the first class but first class was you know, you remember it was taken a couple of months back, right? You you will forget it. So first try this time period is called first trimester uh, till from 14 weeks to 28 weeks. Okay, this is not according to scale. Okay, 14 weeks it is first trimester and then it is second trimester and from 28 weeks to 40 weeks. This time period is 40 weeks uh, in the obstetric time scale. Okay, this is the in the obstetric time scale. Ob Obstetrics means uh, uh, the science dealing with uh, childbirth. Okay, obstetrics and gynecology time uh, time period time frame. This is 40 weeks. So till then it is called a third trimester. Okay, third trimester. A trimester, a mester. The word actually means months. Tri means three. So it is roughly a three month period. So this is one three month period. This is one three month period. This is another three month period. Roughly nine months pregnancy, if you consider like that. So in that, uh, in this time framework, you need to understand that some uh, some uh, prenatal diagnostic procedures you will you can do in the first trimester, in the second trimester, in the third trimester. Okay, uh, some you do specifically in the second trimester, some you do specifically in the first trimester. Okay, so like that, there is a uh, there is a predilection for what. Uh, diagnostic modality you will use the best example I need to uh, mention here is do you remember any any prenatal diagnosis method that a mother will usually undergo routinely one is called ultrasound you might have heard any any pregnant female okay any pregnant female that you know uh, might have underwent an ultrasound ultrasound is one of the prenatal diagnostic techniques and it, it will it can be done in the first trimester to confirm a pregnancy uh, it can be done in the second trimester to uh, identify any anomalies it can be done in the third trimester to know the growth and development of the baby also placental position any other complications for the pregnancy okay so this is a very routinely done prenatal diagnostic method okay so uh, there are so i'll i'll mention these uh, prenatal diagnosis uh, techniques i'll make it as short as possible just to write a short note if at all you get one okay, so I, I may mention which is used in first trimester, which is used in second trimester. So you need to get that idea. That's why I mentioned this timeline once again. Okay, so uh, the purpose is basically we are going to learn. Uh, I mean, the purpose of a prenatal diagnosis test is to assess the growth and well-being and the development. Okay, growth and development and well-being of the fetus. Okay, that is one uh, purpose. Next, very important is to identify fetal malformations and genetic anomalies. Okay, this may have different purposes. Suppose you are identifying a very, uh, you know, very lethal anomaly. For example, you are identifying an anencephaly in a in a uh, in a in a baby. Okay, in a, in a in an embryo, anencephaly. It is it is a very lethal anomaly. Uh, so 
you may have an option of going into an abortion if you identify an anencephaly. So th that that has some uh, importance in management, uh, also in uh, uh, what what decision the patient uh, or the mother has or the parents has to take. So in that case also, you may have to identify malformations or anomalies earlier. Uh, you also may have some things amenable to treatment. For example, uh, now in this age, the, uh, we are actually uh, having uh, things like fetal surgeries. So for that identification of an anomaly, for example, now one anomaly that can be corrected by fetal surgery uh, recently found is uh, spina bifida or meningomyelocele. So if you identify that very early, you it may be uh, you may have a treatment very early in life, even before uh, the child is born. Okay, that is called a fetal surgery. So all these things are possible if we diagnose it. Okay, so for that, we need to identify fetal malformation and genetic anomalies. Okay, next is you can identify placental or uterine anomalies. Okay, uterine anomalies you can identify before uh, birth itself. I mean before uh, getting pregnant itself. Uh, the female you can identify uh, uterine anomalies. But placental anomalies, it is important to do ultrasound and identify placental anomalies. Uh, you may remember uh, an anomaly of the placenta where placenta was implanted lower down in the uterus. I hope you remember the name. This is not an interactive class, so I can't ask you a question. You remember it is called placenta previa. Okay. So in placenta previa management, it is very important to do ultrasounds. You need to know where exactly the placenta is uh, positioned. Okay, placenta previa. Okay, so these are a couple of examples. Next, you need to identify complications of pregnancy. How how that complication, uh, earlier detection and management of complications of pregnancies. For all these, uh, prenatal diagnosis is important. Okay, so these are these are points that are the the purposes of prenatal diagnosis. And of this, maybe this is very important, most most significant in uh, in uh, uh, ultra, uh, the prenatal diagnosis, most significant purpose. So uh, the ones I want to list in prenatal diagnosis, ultrasonography may be the, one of the most common prenatal diagnostic test that you will do is ultrasonography. Uh, if you take an average about uh, in all pregnant females, maybe in the urban population, almost 80% or 90% uh, will have undergone uh, at least one ultrasound scan. Okay. So uh, more and more ultrasound is being done in different time periods, in the first trimester also, in the third trimester also. We'll learn that. Uh, you'll learn about the details of this and when you go into ONG. Next uh, prenatal diagnosis is pre uh, maternal serum screening. Okay, maternal serum screening. That means a mother's blood serum. You know what serum is in physiology. The, the blood contains the blood clot part and the supernatant in a test tube if you if you put the entire blood in the test tube this is called serum okay serum is basically the supernatant uh, it contains plasma and plasma proteins uh, so that that is called uh, serum uh, so that serum can be screened to identify uh, anomalies in the child so that is a uh, looks like a very good technique so that is also important so these two are relatively uh, less invasive if you think like that less invasive Invasive means you are not invading into the into the body. It, it is, uh, you know, invasive procedures are something like a, an injection or a surgery or a or an endoscopic procedure. So those things are called invasive. So these are less invasive. Some parts of ultrasonography may be slightly invasive. I'll come to that details later. But these two are invasive procedures. One is called amniocentesis, and the next is called chorionic villus sampling. Okay, you need to know what is amnion, you need to know what is chorion, those things are taken in different time periods in my class, uh, especially in fetal membranes, I mentioned that clearly. In fetal membranes, I remember some of you has, uh, have asked, uh, uh, when will you do amniocentesis? And then I said that I'll have a different session for amniocentesis. So this is that session. So these two are relatively invasive procedures. Okay, so if you get a short note on prenatal diagnosis, you can classify it like this. The purposes, uh, as I earlier mentioned, and these two are less invasive and these two are more invasive. Okay. So we'll uh, go into details. I have a couple of slides each for each of these. One, two, three, and four. Okay. So first is ultrasonography. Okay, ultrasonography. Ultrasonography and USG. This is USG. Okay, ultrasonography. So this is an ultrasound ultrasound machine. You, when you, what you call as ultrasound or ultrasonography is practically the same 
so this is a machine you might be familiar some of you may have undergone uh, the ultrasound uh, investigation for your abdomen or uh, parts of your body uh, you may have undergone this test uh, so it, it looks like a, a, a like a TV screen or a computer monitor like this and it has a, a several probes like this okay these are all probes uh, this is a jelly if you have underwent uh, an ultrasound uh, examination you might have felt how cold this jelly is okay then there is something like a lot of buttons over here and there are trays tray uh, structures gloves and all materials in here it is something like a console okay, it will be in a wheel it will be portable okay this is uh, this is the ultrasound machine so what is the uh, procedure it is non generally non invasive but i'll i'll add this it is uh, relatively okay you can add it is relatively non invasive why i said that is because in an ultrasound in a uh, we, we are considering only this is not a class on ultrasound this is only uh, the class on ultrasound in prenatal diagnosis in prenatal diagnosis ultrasound can be used in two major uh, uh, ways okay what is the uh, principle the principle is you are using high frequency sound waves as you know ultrasound sound this is basically sound waves but it is high frequency that is uh, the the frequency is above the audible range so you can't actually hear the sounds uh, but it is basically produced by this uh, this is a probe so this probe will produce that sound okay that sound will be produced and that sound will be transmitted down and it will create echoes on on interfaces suppose this is the kidney uh, and this is the area in front of the kidney it will create a, a, a clear margin at this point and it will create an echo back and that echo will be detected by this probe itself this is basically a piezoelectric material you know what is a piezoelectric material okay uh, one which can uh, trans uh, which can uh, what you, what you call that convert one form of energy to another form of energy what is it called uh, forgot that term uh, anyway it converts an electrical impulse into uh, a, a sound uh, wave or a sound wave back into an electrical impulse okay so that is a basic principle so it basically uses high frequency sound waves but in obstetric and gynecology you have two modes of using it okay two modes of using it and those two modes are trans abdominal uh, ultrasound okay trans abdominal scan tas trans abdominal scan and trans vaginal scan so trans this is a trans vaginal scan probe uh, this probe will be inserted into the vagina this is a trans abdominal scan probe so uh, in this case the probe will be emitting sound waves like this within the vagina and that will create uh, echoes from the structures around it and it will create an image from this the image will be shown here if i zoom this uh, uh, in a in a big screen like uh, if i zoom this out it will be something like this this will be the position of the probe and this will be the image that will be seen okay that that will show what all structures you can see okay it, it will be a black and white image okay you will learn the details later but you need to know it for the time being you have two modes one is tas and the next is tvs transvaginal scan both are important prenatal diagnostic test test important modes okay so this is a, a woman undergoing a trans abdominal scan and you can see this is the location of the probe and this will be that cross sectional image okay you can see uh, an image a cut plane like this through the abdomen and all these structures that are seen as different shades of gray uh, will be the structures that is uh, interpreted by the radiologist this is a, a trans vaginal probe you can see uh, uh, the transducer the probe is inserted into the vagina you can see it is high up in the vagina near the cervix and you can see the cervix ovary the uterus this is the adnexal cell mass ovary and uh, fallopian tubes the uterus uh, the rectum behind bladder and front all this can be understood by uh, manipulating this probe in different uh, directions so this is this is slightly this is the slightly invasive part i said you can't say this clearly invasive but it is moderately or relatively invasive it can be slightly uncomfortable for the patient uh, so these are two these two modes are important in uh, uh, obstetric diagnosis so what are the parameters that are revealed by ultrasound you can understand the fetal age and growth okay the presence or absence of congenital anomalies i mentioned that this is a very important purpose of prenatal diagnosis uh, status of the uterine environment including amount of amniotic fluid okay so you can know amniotic fluid amount and uterine environment also 
uh, placental position and umbilical blood flow the umbilical blood flow is very important especially in near term uh, this may be uh, very critical I, I, i mean for example you have some disease which has uh, uh, which may affect the fetal growth to such an extent the blood flow pattern in the umbilical cord you know umbilical cord contains two arteries and one vein this blood flow pattern changes subtle changes will determine whether we need to immediately stop, uh, terminate the pregnancy and go for a delivery or for a cesarean so all these things uh, ultrasound is very very important and also multiple gestations do you remember we said about um, uh, mcda monochorionic diamniotic dichorionic diamniotic okay these all have specific patterns in ultrasound okay the uh, chorion uh, specific signatures will be seen the region where one chorion will meet with another one amniotic sac will meet with another amniotic sac and that will create a specific pattern so all these things you will learn detail in ultrasound so these are all important in fetal age and growth i also add one more thing you may also uh, uh, did, uh, confirmation of pregnancy can also be done confirmation of pregnancy uh, in ultrasound identification of the gestational sac Okay, that that is also a very important purpose of ultrasound this is obviously done in the first trimester in the first trimester you can confirm pregnancy uh, by identifying gestational sac uh, by identifying the fetal pole okay this is called fetal pole uh, also identifying a fetal heartbeat the cardiac activity uh, cardiac activity of the fetus okay these are all definite signs of pregnancy you will learn all this later these are all things you will learn in final year okay so these are some th- some things that you can write in ultrasound now coming to some uh, good images okay this is a picture of uh, i am not a radiologist so you need to just understand that this will be the location of the probe from here the sound is traveling like this and you can see the gestational uh, the the sac here okay it the c is chorionic cavity a is amniotic cavity this is the fetus uh, the embryo and this is the yolk sac can you see that yolk sac you remember this is the exact thing that we learned in embryology you have a chorionic cavity the uh, amniotic cavity will be something inside that okay like this this will be the embryo the embryo will be folded and the yolk sac will be uh, finally uh, pushed into the periphery okay that is what you are seeing here okay this is a more mature embryo you can see the uh, the cranial upper part of the cranium this will be the rump i told you this is called cra- crown rump length okay crown rump length so you will identify the uh, vertex of the crown you identify the rump crl this was an important parameter for un- understanding the, uh, the the growth of the baby this, this is the umbilical cord these are limbs okay so all these things you can uh, identify in the fetus and these are all very important in understanding the growth and development of the fetus this is again a picture of the crown rump length okay see see how the uh, probe uh, the ultrasound in the ultrasound machine they are marking the the uh, the cranium where you can see a cross hair okay a cross hair like this okay you can see another cross hair here and with that they will identify the crl this is crl okay so this is the embryo crl is a very important parameter that is identified the other parameters that are important are bpd by parietal diameter by parietal diameter is another suppose this is the head okay uh, this is the nose and these are the ears you are looking at the head from above okay in that view uh, this is the these two are the parietal eminences you can feel these two eminences in your head okay parietal eminences uh, if you take a, a diameter between that that is called by parietal diameter so by parietal diameter femoral length okay femoral length and abdominal circumference abdominal circumference uh, these three are other very important parameters that are used later on initially you will use crl in the early time period you will use crl as a mark of growth and development okay uh, but later on you will use a combination of biparietal diameter plus femoral length plus abdominal circumference okay biparietal diameter plus femoral length plus abdominal circumference there is there are uh, formulae for this uh, this uh, with this you will identify the how much uh, fetal growth it has attained okay, whether it is satisfactory or not this is the umbilical artery uh, uh, doppler okay umbilical artery doppler or oh, doppler is one thing that you can add to ultrasound in ultrasound image it is basically very uh, it looks very dull it is basically a black and white film okay uh, but 
in in radiologist terms if you add color to it okay this is adding color to it you can actually understand the flow pattern you know what is doppler effect the effect that was found by the physicist christian doppler uh, something that goes away will have a, a shift of frequency audible frequency uh, towards the blue range and something coming nearer will be having an audible shift towards the red range or reverse i mean uh, the red shift right uh, something going away will have a red shift something going nearer will have a blue shift yeah that's it uh, so that that is that is a doppler effect or uh, the the sound of a train or a or a vehicle passing by you will have that sound that that is the doppler effect so that same thing uh, put graphically is, is this uh, this thing okay uh, the different colors that you see are actually umbilical vessels one is an umbilical artery and one other will be umbilical vein if there is a change of uh, uh, color of uh, change of flow for example this is showing how in the systole the blood is flowing up and down okay this is a systolic wave pattern you know the, the systolic wave pattern in uh, cardiac cycle so just like that you imagine in the umbilical cord you have wave patterns like this you can see in this in this image you can see that wave pattern has a slight reversal so that means that the blood is not flowing further down to the fetus that means the fetus is going in for hypoxia so this may be a very critical point and if you identify this point you may uh, go to a termination of i mean uh, you you may terminate the pregnancy by going for an immediate cesarean or going for an probably an immediate cesarean so such critical decisions may be taken by using a uh, doppler when it is added on to ultrasound so along with ultrasound you can say about doppler also doppler uh, in when you add doppler you will add color to the image you will basically know uh, blood flow patterns that's the word i want you to understand blood flow patterns okay you can also know the amniotic fluid amount you remember two terms about amniotic fluid increase of amniotic fluid you call it polyhydramnios in decrease of amniotic fluid you call it oligohydramnios okay these two things uh, i also te so told the associations of these two diseases like uh, you have uh, anencephaly you have esophageal atresia right okay these two can be associated with polyhydramnios oligohydramnios can be associated with renal anomalies right uh, because we we told how the amniotic fluid uh, turnover will occur so measurement of amniotic fluid is important so for that we basically know where the baby is and you identify pockets of amniotic fluid uh, in in different quadrants and you will basically measure the depth of amniotic fluid in those pockets okay this is this is the this is the fetal head or the fetal body and uh, this will be the depth of amniotic fluid and you can measure that depth pocket and you can create what is called amniotic fluid index okay, so that will give you an, a measurement of amniotic fluid so you have a lot of things from the fetus to umbilical vessels to amniotic fluid to uterine anomalies to placenta a lot of things you can assess by ultrasound there is no single prenatal diagnostic technique as ultrasound as effective as ultrasound uh, to assess a pregnancy uh, the fetus and uh, the maternal factors near the fetus okay so that's why it is most popular and uh, probably every pregnant female that you encounter um, will have uh, probably undergone a scan uh, an ultrasound scan okay. the next is a maternal serum screening test okay maternal serum screening is basically you take uh, samples of uh, sample of maternal blood and you take the serum and in that you measure some chemicals okay well, this is one thing that this is one of the first ones uh, that has been identified this is called alpha fetoprotein afp okay afp is uh, basically secreted by the liver fetal liver but it escapes into the amniotic fluid uh, and uh, also into from the placenta into the circulation of the mother so uh, you have afp in the amniotic fluid you can have afp in the amniotic fluid earlier on uh, but from the placenta it can uh, leak into the maternal circulation also so you can basically screen that in the mother so this can be increased okay increase of ms afp M ms means maternal syrup okay, my ms afp can be found in neural tube defects uh, also in other anomalies like omphalo seal gastrochases these two are gi abnormalities okay uh, actually omphalo seal and gastrochases can be taught in general embryology classes but i didn't go to that extent because it may be slightly confusing but you will learn this in uh, GIT development. Okay, so when you learn about this in GIT development, omphalo seal and gastrochises, uh, also in, in in bladder development, bladder extrophy, 
you can remember msafp is one of the prenatal diagnostic tests that can detect these also decrease of msafp can be seen in down syndrome okay uh, now there are uh, this was the first uh, biochemical marker that was identified as a, as a candidate for maternal serum screen but later on more and more chemicals were added onto it one is human chorionic gonadotrophin hcg okay hcg in the mother and next is unconjugated estriol Okay, so it's basically a, a derivative of the estrogen hormone. Uh, this has been uh, added in different, uh, you know, combinations. HCG, AFP, and estriol uh, together used is called triple screening. HCG, AFP, estriol, and inhibin. Okay, you add inhibin to it, you will call it quadruple screening. Okay, these are all important tests for Down syndrome. Okay, Down syndrome and also other genetic anomalies like uh, Edward Patau. Okay, for all this. Uh, these tests can be used so altogether you can just write maternal serum screening and you can write these biochemical markers uh, afp hcg and unconjugated estriol okay unconjugated estriol also you can add inhibin this is more recent uh, biochemical marker that is added to it the basic idea of these two is that ultrasound and maternal serum screening is not so invasive you don't have to you know there's nothing much to be scared of for for the mother to do it so it, there is more acceptability for the mother to undergo a test uh, to identify any uh, any anomalies like this uh, this becomes very significant this doesn't look so significant. maternal serum screening is not routinely done for a lot of patients for all pregnant females but suppose a, 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 a lady had a, a child with down syndrome in the next pregnancy the lady is the parents are confused uh, the parents are uh, very much anxious about whether they will have another down syndrome or it will whether it will be a normal child in that case uh, identification uh, pre the maternal serum screening can be very much valuable okay, before going to further tests okay, that is a significant this is one of the projected significance uh, potential significance that i can think about okay so that that is about the second uh, point second topic the next topic is amniocentesis okay amniocentesis basically you Take synthesis. The word means you basically take a sample of amniotic fluid. So something you do a synthesis means you take a sample of it. Okay. Pericardiosynthesis means taking a sample of uh, or taking uh, taking out the fluid in the pericardial cavity. It's called pericardiosynthesis. Okay, I just to, uh, to, told you the uh, the etymology of the of the term. Okay. So amniocentesis is uh, basically. It is an invasive, obviously it is an invasive one because you are basically introducing a needle into the uterus, through the abdominal cavity into the uterus and into the amniotic cavity, right? So it is an a pre invasive prenatal diagnostic. And it is preferably performed between 15 and 18 weeks of gestation, uh, most best in age 16 weeks of gestation, 16 weeks. Uh, but it is never done less than 14 weeks of gestation because only after 14 weeks you have sufficient amount of amniotic fluid and you always do this with uh, ultrasound guidance you can see an ultrasound transducer um, here transduction that was the word i i was i was thinking for when i taught you about when i mentioned about ultrasound conversion of one uh, one form of signal to another form that's for transduction here yeah. so uh, it is not done uh, before 14 weeks because you don't have uh, sufficient amount of amniotic fluid and in that case you can potentially injure the umbilical cord or the fetal parts body parts uh, with the needle so that that is something undesirable that we don't want that so we need sufficient amount of fluid and we need it to be done under ultrasound guidance okay uh, so it is not done less than 14 weeks ideal time is 16 weeks okay it is invasive these are points that you, you should remember now uh, this is what is being done it is sampled by inserting a 22 gauge needle a gauge is basically the 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 what you call the diameter this is the needle okay this is the needle the diameter of the needle is measured by two parameters one is called gauge another parameter is called french gauge you will learn about this details later okay this is a 22 gauge needle uh, through the mother's anterior abdominal wall and the uterine walls into the amniotic cavity by piercing the chorion and the amnion. You really know what is chorion and what is amnion. I hope you know what is chorion and amnion. Uh, if you don't know, go and revise. revise. Okay. A syringe is attached and amniotic fluid is withdrawn. Okay, So you get some amniotic fluid. 
Okay, now what can you do with this amniotic fluid? You can do biochemical assay. You can do assay for AFP. You can do assay for acetylcholinesterase. Acetylcholinesterase. I hope you know what acetylcholinesterase is. If you have completed neuromuscular physiology, you will know you have acetylcholine formed uh, as a neurotransmitter, and this will be, uh, you know, uh, this will be. Um, uh, what you call inactivated by this enzyme acetylcholinesterase back into uh, acetylcholinesterase may call in and it will be reformed so this and this is a, a basic uh, purpose of acetylcholinesterase in neurotransmitter uh, point of view but this enzyme and this enzyme has um, alpha fetoprotein uh, afp uh, and acetylcholinesterase are important biochemical markers within the amniotic fluid which can be markers of neural tube defects i mentioned this earlier in the msafp also right here also i mentioned that uh, oh no not msafp yeah in msafp i uh, mentioned that msafp neural tube defects uh, th this can uh, this goes into the maternal fluid i also mentioned that this can slightly leak into the amniotic fluid also so that is what we are uh, we are uh, making use of here okay so in neural tube defects uh, these two enzymes acetylcholinesterase and afp can be increased you also can get some cells if you remember how am uh, my class on amniotic cavity and amniotic fluid you have sloughed cells from the fetal epidermis fetal epithelium can have sloughed cells remaining uh, suspended in this but the cells are very few and from these cells if you culture it you can actually study about the fetus and that is also important in amniocentesis so you can culture this okay this this can undergo culture cell culture and from that cell culture you can do karyotyping and uh, from that karyotyping you can do analysis of genetic anomalies in the fetus okay so you can identify neural tube defects by doing biochemical assays you can also do karyotyping but the cells are very few and this culture will be very prolonged Okay, so if you actually need to do cell culture, amniocentesis may not be one of the best uh, methods. Uh, a better method may be chorionic villus sampling, but there are uh, benefits and risk for each of these. So you basically know how to write a short note on amniocentesis. You can write that uh, this, uh, you can use cells, you can use biochemical assay, but cells are very few, but eventually you can do a culture. It will be prolonged because the cells are very few and you need a mitogenic medium uh, uh, in a culture medium to uh, increase the, to, to proliferate the cells to do that culture and do, to do karyotyping to get a yield of a result okay. so that is about amniocentesis the next is chorionic villus sampling uh, now uh, chorionic okay next is chorionic villus sampling uh, chorionic villus sampling uh, you do at 11 to 12 weeks of gestation what you do is sampling of trophoblastic tissue you know what is trophoblast okay the trophoblast is uh, you know it is part of the chorion tissue and uh, so you basically sample it the sampling can be done either by a, a, a catheter by a chorionic villus catheter it's a malleable catheter that can be introduced through the vagina through the cervix through the vaginal through the cervix into the uterine cavity and you can uh, scrape a little bit of chorion here or you can go uh, Trans abdominally. Okay, you can you can have two routes for doing this, and this obviously needed an ultrasound transducer again. Okay. So this uh, a needle is uh, inserted trans abdominally, or a catheter is inserted trans vaginally into the placental mass, and five to thirty milligram of villus tissue is aspirated, and you do a culture of this. But you have a lot of tissue here, and what the the tissue that you choose is the mesenchymal core of the placental tissue you remember in the placental tissue you had a mesenchymal core with blood vessels inside it around that you had trophoblast you remember that i hope okay this is trophoblast this is a this is a typical chorionic villus you have similar chorionic villus here you have another chorionic villus here another chorionic villus here in between that you have maternal blood you remember this was the histology of placenta okay so basically you are taking tissue from here okay from here change the color you are taking tissue from this as this part okay that is a mesenchymal core so you are basically taking the tissue from this aspect that's the mesenchymal core so that tissue you take and culture so this as you have a lot of tissue available here the yield is more and uh, the time period that is needed for uh, this is uh, much more lesser 
okay uh, the uh, you remember in amniotic uh, amniotic synthesis the cell culture needed more time this needs less time but here there is a more risk of fetal loss uh, compared to amniocentesis okay now what are the indications general indications of prenatal diagnostic test so as i mentioned the, uh, the things i mentioned are ultrasound ultrasound just to summarize uh, maternal serum screening okay maternal serum screening and you have two invasive tests one is amniocentesis and the next is chorionic villus sampling okay so when all you can use this advanced maternal age very important more than 35 years of age is uh, one of the uh, one of the important uh, risk factors for genetic anomalies example classically down syndrome okay down syndrome uh, the the risk for a, uh, having a baby with downs uh, exponentially increases as maternal age advances beyond 35 years okay after 35 years after 40 years after 45 years uh, a mother the risk for uh, having a down child is much more okay uh, the reason for this is i, I don't know whether i mentioned uh, you remember that uh, i didn't mention that in class also i think you remember there was a diplotene phase a dictyotene phase diplotene arrest the first meiotene arrest meiotic arrest so that is a point where the the oocyte will remain primary oocyte will remain in an arrest for years you remember that it will remain in an arrest for years okay so this time period as it advances to more than 35 years to 40 years there are there is more risk there is more and more risk for undergoing uh, genetic anomalies in that a non disjunction anomaly can be more common and eventually a down syndrome can occur so that may be this is one of the postulates uh, that for that next is a family history of genetic anomaly very important very important advanced maternal age and a family history the, it, the family history can be uh, a sibling with a genetic anomaly an elderly sibling with a genetic anomaly or one of the parents has a, has a genetic anomaly and uh, both the parents are, are concerned about whether the child will have that so these two are very common indications for doing a prenatal diagnostic test most importantly for example amniotic synthesis or amniocentesis or chorionic villus sampling or maternal serum screen maternal diabetes this is also very important this is very very common also maternal mother's diabetes is very common and in that case uh, you will do uh, you will do ultrasound obviously you will do ultrasound more uh, keen ultrasound uh, examinations will be done in um, Uh, you know in the first in the second trimester for anomalies in the first trimester for something called nuchal translucency i didn't mention that you don't need to know that okay that is one of the earliest uh, tests that you do for anomalies and uh, the, all this can be done in maternal diabetes uh, then an abnormal ultrasound or a serum screening okay in maternal diabetes you do ultrasound you also do maternal serum screening okay and uh, if any of these are positive you may have to do further tests like amniocentesis or chorionic villus sampling okay so these are all important indications for a prenatal diagnostic test okay so uh, that's it i think um, it, it, it was a short class you may get a short note on any of these okay uh, like you may get a, a short note on amniocentesis it's a common short note okay amniocentesis if if one short note will be asked on prenatal diagnostic it will be amniocentesis and the prenatal diagnostic tests as such can also be a short note okay so with that i'll stop thank you thank you so much